dirty word? How many of y'all think money is a dirty word? What about budgets? Is budget more of a dirty word than money? How many of y'all do monthly budgets? Nah. Okay. You try? Yeah. It's kind of hard sometimes. It's hard to do a budget and stick with it. And one of the things that I find a lot of people, they do, and they'll say, well, let's try to put it together and see how long we can make it work. And you get frustrated. You think, oh, this isn't going to work. I don't have enough in my groceries, or I don't have enough in my dining out. I don't have enough in my clothing, or I fall short every month. How do I make this a healthy subject? You know, most Americans, they live off plastic these days. And with plastic, I mean credit cards. Because in today's world, it's just as easy to swipe the card, but it's harder to make those payments at the end of the month when those bills come in. So that's one of those things that's so important with creating that budget to find a way to become debt free. If you're trying to refinance your home, you know, today's rates, have y'all seen today's rates for refinancing your house? Yeah, they were really low, 3%. You could get, you could actually, if you're looking at refinancing your house, you can take what you're paying on your 30-year mortgage, refinance at a 15-year rate, and probably be close to the same payment. Huge, huge change. Because most of us, we purchased a home, you know, seven, eight years ago, we're paying, paying close to six or seven percent. You can cut that rate in half. So it's one of those things to use that difference in what you're refinancing your house for to pay off some of those debts. Cool thing when you're looking at doing your budget. So this is how some of us feel right now. Money's not a healthy subject. The next few days are critical. We're going to have to slowly reintroduce you to cash. A lot of people, when they first come to see me, sometimes I feel like I need a couch in my office or a bed rather than chairs. Because they just have to lay down and tell me, I've got a problem. I've got a problem. Let me tell you about it. But I have a lot of individuals that come to me that just have a couple things, we get it paid off in six months, they're good to go. It's finding where you are with that budget, where you are with your debt, to see what we can do to make it better. You know, a lot in today's world, for those of us who have children, fast food is a lot easier. I've learned that this in this fall because my son is now playing soccer. We don't get home until 7.30, three nights a week. It is so hard for me to get home, get him in the shower, get homework done, and still cook dinner and have him in the bed by 8.30. For a five-year-old, that's really tough. It's easier to sweep through that drive-through, pick up McDonald's, pick up something, you know, hamburger, and feed him and be done for the night. But those will add up over time. But most people live off fast food. Fast food adds up. Same thing with going to the beach. Many of us don't plan our vacations ahead of time and save up when we don't put that in the budget. <clears throat> we just say, oh, let's swipe the hotel cost pay for it later. We'll pay for it out of our tax refund money. We'll pay for it out of our Christmas bonus money. And a lot of us, with the change in the economy, we're not getting, we no longer get those end of the year bonuses. We no longer get those yearly raises. Or we're no longer receiving those 401k benefits or 401k matches. We're not seeing those, and maybe not here, but maybe our spouses. We're not seeing that with our spouses and employers either. So we're having to make those changes to, to, in our budget make sure we account for the change in the economy. So ask yourself, do you spend more than you make? Are you having to put some of your essentials on your credit card every month? Do you put your groceries or your gas on your credit card but yet you don't pay it off every month? I'm okay with you using your credit card every month as long as you pay the balance off. A lot of people say, Jen, I use my credit card every month so I can get the points. I'm perfectly fine with that. As long as you pay it off. My husband's a big believer in that. If I were to tell him that he had to cut that credit card up, he would go crazy. But he's also responsible enough to pay it off every single month. And that's how we get our vacation fund. We actually use those points to pay it off. And we don't spend any more than what's in our budget. We are a firm believer, and I use this example everywhere I go because I didn't realize what I had married. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize what I had married until the first Sunday of the month um, after our marriage. And we said, he said, we we're talking about where we were going to eat after church. And he said, well, Jim, how much do we have left in the budget? And I said, 
well, I don't know. So I went to look, and I said, John, I said, I think we've got about $5. He says, well, it looks like it will be Taco Bell today after church. <laughs> and so and that is a ritual. Every Sunday, oh, that's what we look to see, what's left in the budget. Some days we get Cracker Barrel, some days it's Taco Bell. It just all depends. But we are very faithful in what we do because that's what we want to make sure that we have a college fund set up for our children. We want to make sure we have enough set aside for us because, honestly, I don't want to have to depend on my children to provide for me. Once they're finished with school, I want to set them on their merry way. Have them gone. And that's why we can live comfortably. How many of y'all are married and have children? Yeah, you understand. You're ready to set them free. Spread their wings and go. How many of you pay yourself last? You know what that means? Pay yourself last? What do you think pay yourself last means? Save last. That's right, you save last. That means you don't have anything going to your savings and out from your paycheck. You don't have anything going into your 401k or anything going into retirement. You pay all of your bills first before you set something aside for yourself. And that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're always supposed to pay yourself first. So you're always supposed to have something that's be set aside into your savings account to your 401k. And I'm going to tell you more about how to do that in just a few minutes. Do you charge items instead of saving for them? Do you think about that emergency fund instead of having one? How much do you think you should have in your emergency fund? In your emergency fund? Six to nine months. months. Six to nine months? Six months? Your emergency fund, how many of y'all have ever heard of Financial Peace University and Faith Ramsey? Got one? How many, have any of y'all ever gone through it? Okay. Your emergency fund is generally anywhere from 1000 to $2,000. That's your emergency fund, okay? Um, I advise with some big ass. Emergency fund is something that you use if your refrigerator goes out, your car breaks down, something minor. Your major savings is your three to six months of savings. But what you're looking to do is you're looking to do your emergency fund first, thousand dollars, because if you try to create your savings first your three to six months before you start paying off your debt, it's harder to get there. You want to do your emergency fund first, develop your thousand dollars in your savings account, then start paying off your debts. And once you get your debts paid off outside of your mortgage, then you focus on your major savings, which is your three to six months. Okay? A lot of people say, well, I'm going to put that three to six months of my major savings first before I start paying off my debt. Many people fail at that because how it takes forever to get that three to six months if you're still having to make those credit card payments and those car payments and that sort of thing. You can't get your house refinanced because you've got too much other debt out there. So you have to prioritize a little bit differently. If you spend uncontrollably, how many of, I'm, I'm going to have to pick on the women for just a second. Do you have any uh, Tarche shoppers in here? <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard. Sometimes we go into Tarche with our list and we come out with a little bit more. My husband fusses at me about that too. He knows when I've been to Target and he says, oh my gosh, I'm sure those things were not on your list. And I say the same thing about him when he goes to Lowe's or Home Depot. Yeah? <laughs> yes, shake your head. You're about the same way, aren't you? Or Best Buy for the men. Yeah, now I get the nod back there. <clears throat> All right, so what is a budget? You know, some people think that this is a scary word. It's going to tie up your time and unpleasant thoughts. Every time I say, let's do a budget, people say, I can't do that. That takes too long. It's, gonna, it's just going to make me frustrated. It's just not for me. But it's really a simple thing to do. It is not hard. It doesn't take much time once you get it established. And that's one of the cool things that Family Trust that we help you do and it's a free service. When you're a member of Family Trust, the financial counseling that we do is free. So we come and you can come and we'll do a budget, help you set it up, and help you stay with it as long as you want. I have members that have been with me for two years now. I have a member that just paid off $44,000 in debt. She's been with me for one year. And that's because she comes to see me every other Friday. That's how easy it is because she comes and spends 30 minutes with me every other Friday. We just go over a budget and make sure she's sticking with it. It's a simple process. So don't let her budget, don't let that B word scare you. It just shows how much money you have and how much you're spending. It shows how much you can save and how much you can pay for the future. How much do you have going to certain things, such as how much are you spending on clothing? How much are you spending on gas? And gas is a major expense right now. <coughs> the prices, you know, they fluctuate. They seem to be averaging around 340, 350 right now. And for those of us that have to, if we have spouses that have to drive to Charlotte or if we live in Charlotte, we have to drive them here, wherever. I mean, some of us that live out, I'm gonna, I'll throw it out there, Sharon or Phil, or someone way on the other side of York, that's expensive. 
in terms of gas. I mean, when I do budgets for individuals, sometimes they have $400 to $700 in monthly expenses for gas. And I said, are you sure? And we'll tally up gas, and they're not. I mean, it's, it's out there. Gas prices kill us right now. So it's really important to track the expenses. I'm going to show you how to do that. So why do budgets matter? It's important to keep us from living above and beyond our means. If you want to get that house paid off before you retire, if you want to help save for that college fund, help put your kids through school, if you want to get those debts paid off, but there's a lot of things you can do with that budget. It also understands, the, it helps you understand the choices that you make with your money. A lot of us don't know where it goes every month. We just go by the ATM, we say, what's our balance? Good, I got enough to last us until that next paycheck comes in, but we don't want to do that. It prevents us from living paycheck to paycheck and it helps us to meet those financial goals. You don't want to be one of these individuals that you're sitting there on Thursday night saying, oh, please, please, please let my check get in the bank before all these other checks clear. I just like that debit card. Please don't let that transaction go through before my monthly deposit comes in. That's not how you want to be. You want to have enough funds in there to clear all of your transactions. And that's one of the benefits of having this. It frees up your time. You're not sitting there, you're not having to stress over it. What's the number one cause of divorce? Money. 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 Financial matters. And that's why less stress <coughs> provides better health, provides, provides a better relationship to in a marriage, helps you achieve your goals and satisfaction, and it gives you greater control and a peace of mind over what's happening with your paycheck. And the other thing is to say, for instance, if you're wanting to start your investments, all right? Say, I'm not sure, maybe you don't have any debt right now. You think, well, I'm not sure if I need a budget because I don't have any debt. You really, you do, because from that standpoint, go through your budget and say, what do I have left that I could be investing right now? All right? You know, we have an investment services at Family Justice. You can come see that, and he'll say, this is what you'd be putting into a mutual fund, or this is what you'd be putting in stocks, or however you want to do it. All right? Look at it from that standpoint, too. It's not all based on debt. I have members that come see me all the time that are already debt free. They just want to make sure they're going to put their money in the right place. So where do I start? The first thing, what's the first thing you have to do? Where, where do you start? What's the first thing you have to do when developing a budget? Somebody puts down their paper. They don't want to get called on. I don't think on anybody in my class. It's your attitude. It's your attitude. You've got to have a positive attitude to make it work. I always tell people when you come to see me, you have to be ready to do this. If you're not ready, it's not going to work. A lot of members will come and see me and we'll talk through it. They might not come back for a couple months. But the lady that I was telling you about the 44000 that she just paid off, she's paid off her home equity, she's paid off her car, and two credit cards. The only thing she has left now is her mortgage. She's the one that the first time she came to see me was last April. I thought that she's not going to make it. She didn't come back for three months. She came back three months later with her game face on and she was ready to go. And now this is where she stands. And she's actually the lady in progress way. All right? She is one of our goal. I mean, she is one of she is one of my success stories in that she has been a lot of focus. She loves what she's doing now. She's got a game face on and she'll tell everyone her story. And you just have to be ready. You have to know what your goals are. And you have to be ready to go down that right path. You also have to be ready to improve your spending habits. You have to say, okay, maybe we can't eat out of the outback four times a month. Maybe we have to cut it down to two. Maybe I have to give up on the Starbucks coffee five days a week. Maybe I can go twice a week. Creating a budget is not that hard. And some people say, well, you know what? I'm going to have to be so strict. I'm going to have to go to everything that's going to be generic. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't live like that. It's not necessarily true. It, you'll never know until you put it all down on paper. Once you put it on paper, see what the final numbers are, and then see what you need to adjust. All right. Nerves and free spirits. This is something I cover in every class before we start talking about budgets. In every relationship, or every individual, actually, you're either a nerd or a free spirit. How many of you think you're nerds? I have a classroom full of free spirits. Yeah? My free spirits usually say, woo, and get excited. My nerds are the ones that already track their expenses, they know where every penny goes, and they can make their checkbook balance every afternoon. 
for me. Yeah, I got, well, I got people pulling and shaking their heads. Exactly. My free spirits, they spin in the wind. They're the ones that always stop at the, at the cells right there when you walk into Target and they have to scan the dollar section as they cruise through. You know, and they don't go over the list and whatever ends up in their buggy. You know, yes, this is awesome. Yeah, and I am my free spirits for one of you. That's me. That's me. When you're doing a budget, if you're married, if you're married, usually in every household, one of you's a nerd, one of you's a free spirit. All right? In my house, I'm generally the nerd. So when it comes to Target, then I become the free spirit. But overall, I'm generally the nerd. All right? My husband is, he's okay, free spirit wise. I can, I can rule him in. The only time that we cannot do a budget and he, we have a hard time talking about this, and I'll, we'll, when you're looking at doing a budget and you're nerding your free spirit and you're sitting down having a conversation, all right, together. Nerd, you have to listen to the free spirit. Free spirit, you have to communicate, all right? You have to give your input when you're doing this. Nerd, you have to shut up and listen. Got it? As my five-year-old says, he says, Mom, you do too much of this, you need to do some of this. All right, I think that's what he gets in trouble in school for. All right, so you have to listen. The only time that I can't get my free spirit to focus when doing the budget is on Sundays, Saturdays or Sundays, because it's football season. All right? So I try to reel my free spirit in on another day to do budget. Now, when it's not football season, we usually do our budget one day during the week, and we do it once a month. All right? We've gotten to the point now we can do it sit down once a month and say, this is what we're planning on for November. All right? It takes 10 minutes. We just look at it and say, okay, we got everything cleaned out. The only time it takes a little bit longer to do a budget is when you're looking at close, when you have Christmas involved and expenses, or when you have a month that you're planning for a vacation or birthdays or something like that. But generally 10 minutes, we're good today. But free spirit, you have to show up for me. You have to be there mentally and you have to be prepared. Now, if you're not married, and especially free spirits, you have to have an accountability partner. All right, you always have to have an accountability partner. So when you're in Target, or you're in a store and you find that $50 sweater, you call that accountability partner and you say, guess what, I found this sweater, it's on sale, what do you think? And that accountability partner says, well, is it in your budget? Be reasonable. Don't let it be your best friend. Your best friend is always going to give in. Don't let it be your relative, because your relative is never going to tell you no. Okay? So free spirits especially, always make sure you have an accountability partner. Okay, so now you know the difference between nerds and free spirits. So how does the budget work? It's basically just the difference of what you have coming in and what you have going out. It's not hard to do. It allows you to give each dollar that you have a name. Either you control your money or it controls you. And it's real simple. You just give everything, every dollar, you either say it's food, utilities, electric, you imagine it's gas, whatever, and I'll give you a breakdown of that just a second. How many of you remember this movie? You remember this? Jerry McGuire? Show me the money. You have to tell it. You have to categorize it. And here's that list I was telling you about the possible expenses. A lot of people say, I don't understand how to categorize what I spend on. Housing. We want to make sure if you're looking at when you're doing your budget, budget that you count for, say for instance you live in a neighborhood that you have HOA use, include that in your housing expense. Utilities, cable, electric, anything to that extent. Insurance, make sure you do like life insurance, car insurance, anything to that nature. You know, groceries and household. I always say anything for groceries and households, make it simple and round it all together. You can even include your personal care items in that. Anything you can buy at Walmart other than tires and clothing, put that in your grocery budget. Just make it simple. And all of these are basically self-explanatory. One other thing I will point out about the gifts and the holidays and the birthdays, I think so. That's really hard because I don't spend something on that every single month. How do I do that? Make it simple. Take it for the year. Say, for instance, I'm just going to put some out there because it's easy. I spend $1,200 a year on Christmas and birthdays. So that's $100 a month. Basic, right there. And what you can do with that $100 a month, transfer it over to a savings account and have that savings account called gifts. 
you know, the credit union, you can have up to 10 different accounts. I have a lot of members that have accounts called different things. One of them is called insurance, and they pay their, they pay their car insurance every six months. So every month they take a sixth of that and they transfer it over to their insurance account. So when that insurance bill comes due, it's ready to go. They can transfer right over to the insurance company. Same thing with the gifts. They can transfer $100 over, put it into that savings account. So when they're ready to take a draw off of it, there is, they're not having to have anything short in checking account. They're not having to charge anything to a credit card. They're ready for that expense. Same thing with vacation and travel. Think about what you spend for the year and divide them over 12. Put it into a separate savings account if you have to save for it that way. Always, always, always give yourself some miscellaneous or blue money in your budget, however whatever you want to call it. If you don't, if you get yourself so tight in that budget, you're going to give up. Because you always have something, a miscellaneous expense, or you always have to give yourself some kind of gift. And I'm not saying $500 is your gift money or $500 is your miscellaneous money. All right, be reasonable with it. But you always have some kind of miscellaneous expense. One of the other forms that in your in your um, in your uh, folder that you have, it looks like this. This is a basic budgeting form that I have. I'm going to tell you about this. This gives you something that you can track it and say what your average is for the month. All right, we were talking about doing your possible expenses. This is the form that we use here at the credit union that you can take what you think your average is for the month, then you can set your goal, and then you can track what you actually spent and see what you need to improve in these areas. Now, we have almost everything listed that you can think of. Rent, mortgage, your utilities, groceries, um, insurance, your medical care, transportation, child care savings, and so on. And on the back is where we have entertainment miscellaneous. And then down at the bottom, we have your income. Now, we have all this created into an Excel spreadsheet. So when you come in for financial counseling, we give this to you. And you go home, and you can change these numbers. It will automatically calculate it for you. It's, it's a gift that we give back. It's a gift you can change it and create one for you. You can create it every single month and keep track of it. And it will change automatically in the system. For you. So it's a, it's a cool tool to have and to use. So something to point out that you can start working on your budget immediately. All right. So when you're turning your monthly expenses and you say, "Wow, I'm coming up short a little bit," or I need to find out where it's all going, maybe I need to think about what my needs are versus my wants. Determine what your necessary expenses are. What are always the four the four most important expenses? Food, shelter, clothing, and transportation are all of the four most important expenses. Debt payments come into play of your needs as long as you're making the food, shelter, clothing, and transportation, as long as you've got this covered. Discretionary expenses, vacation, entertainment, dining out, the blood money, books, those types of things, those are things that can be cut in your budget. Those are things you can trim back on. So if you're coming up short, those are certain areas that you want to look at. How do I track expenses? Keep up with all of your receipts. Put an envelope in your car. So as you make that drive through the drive through slide that receipt down in that envelope. Develop a journal or a spreadsheet. If you use your debit card, print out a history. Look at your bank statement. Keep, keep up with the keep track of it. Some of I use Quicken. And I can download all of my transactions, I put it into Quicken, and it tells me exactly where everything went. So now when I download a transaction and it says Target, it automatically, I can say it went to groceries or it went to clothing. And it says, this is how much I have left to spend this month on groceries, or this much left on clothing. I track every single expense, same thing with gas. Envelope method, um, we'll, I'll tell you about that in just a second. Technology. We use a program now, my branch with PFM at Family Trust, and I'm going to show you a couple times from that, that you can go through, and every time you use your own debit card at Family Trust, you can categorize it there, just like I used with Quicken. It's a cool program. Determine all sources of your income. Paycheck, child support, alimony, social security, pension, dividends, and tax refund. 
Do not leave out any sources of income when you're working on your budget because you don't want to sell yourself short. The other thing is, too, what, this is a, a big importance. I have a lot of members that come through that get back a large tax refund. And I say large tax refund, they get back five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. And I always say, do not let the IRS hold your money. If you're tired of your budget right now, change your withholdings. All right? If you go out to irs.gov, you can calculate what your expected tax refund is or what it will be when you file your 2012 taxes. Right? It's irs.gov. You can determine and say, well, maybe I should go ahead and change my withholdings now and go ahead and pocket a little bit more money for the remainder of this year. And put that money towards your debt. Put that money towards your savings. But don't let the IRS hold your money for the entire year. Really just frightens you to carry cash. You 
don't have to do it, but you can do the exact same thing with your debit card. All you have to do is get your envelope, put groceries on the outside of it, or dining out on the outside of it, write what your budget is, and then mark through it. As you do your transaction, put the receipt in the envelope, then you know what you have left.
big picture is, check this out, the red expenses, the green is your income. Yes. 